Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Robert Morley, also known as AKA Robin Hearts, which is my drag persona. I'm an independent self-taught fashion designer and I want to take you on that journey as well with me today. Subscribe to my channel for more fashion, hair, makeup, anything drag related. But even if you don't want to be into something drag related, I have a whole lot more coming for you as well in the future. Turn on the notification bell down below if you want to get notifications every time I upload a new video. Or you can also follow me on Instagram at Robin underscore hearts underscore. But I'll link that down below in the description. And if you follow me on Instagram, you get daily updates, you get to keep up in my life, and you get to see what content will be coming as well. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So today I'll pretty much be showing all of you how to make a matching bomber jacket and basic pants cord set. Now you don't need to make this if you do recreate it in coordinated fabrics. You can mix and match, you can clash fabrics off each other, you can do whatever you want with it pretty much. But I'm just going to show you the process on how to make it. So we're pretty much just going to start with cutting our fabric and um, I'm using pre-made patterns that I'd made myself. If you want a separate video on how to make patterns or how to draft custom patterns for yourself, um, just let me know and I can do that for yourselves. Um, so pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm just putting the fabric on a fold. Um, I'm putting the fabric on a fold so at least then when I actually cut my patterns that I know that the two sides are actually even. So as you can see here, what I'm doing, I've pinned the pants pattern, but I don't want the pocket to be this shape. So just so I don't cut that, I'm getting pins and I'm marking in the new shape of the pants that I want because I'm going to sew in my pocket separately in a while. So here I am again, back with the back of the pants pattern. The fabric is still on a fold. Um, I'm going to pin this in again, cut around it, and then I have two fronts and I have two backs. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to cut the pants pattern. As you can see the corner there has been snipped off so I'm just kind of sorting out the shape myself and just continuing it on as a straight edge. Next of all I'm going to move on to the sleeve and the bodice. So we're moving on to the jacket part and so first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin my sleeve down. Again I'm cutting all of my patterns here on the fabric on the fold. I'm just going to get my zip and I'm going to measure the length of my zip. So what I've just done there is I've measured the zip and I've measured the length of the cuff that I'm using on the bottom of the jacket. I'm subtracting the length of the cuff from the zip and then subtracting the length of the bodice which is already 15 inches and whatever is the remaining amount is what I'm adding on to the end of the pattern then. So at the moment I'm just marking how far down I want the bodice to go because I don't want this to be cropped, I want it to be a full length. And then with a pencil I'm just drawing my shape onto the fabric just so I know where to cut. I'm going to use the bodice pattern that I've just created to cut out the back pattern for the jacket. And what I'm doing is putting it on a fold again and just cutting around the shape and with this it gives you the front and the back of the pocket that you'll be sewing together later. And I'm going to do this twice so I have two pockets. Now I'm going to cut, go and cut the back pockets and the cargo pockets that I'm going to use down in the side of the pants. So 
So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my lining layer together. So I've sewed down the side seam and now I'm sewing up the shoulder seam of the lining. So then you flip it inside out. And once you have it flipped inside out, you can see the fit, you can see the shape that you're going for, you can see if there's anything that needs to be changed. Um, and I do advise to press out the seams as well for a cleaner look. So now I'm just going in with our shell fabric and I'm just copying the exact same steps that I did with the lining. Sewing down the side seam and each seam I'm sewing at a quarter inch allowance. Um, I just kind of prefer it myself, it goes for a cleaner look. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting the lining inside the actual shell fabric with right sides facing each other, putting the sleeves all the way down and just making sure that each seam is lining up with each other. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pin every corner. So also when pinning the lining and the shell fabric together, I didn't pin the sleeves shut because that's how I'm going to turn it all back right side out after I've sewn it together and this way you get a much cleaner finish and all your seams are hidden. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew around the perimeter, just keep following with the same stitch, taking my pins out as I go, making sure that the fabric's in line with each other, again sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just flipping everything out through the sleeve, lining everything up and popping the corners. I'm just measuring the length of the base of the jacket so I can find the midpoint and just marking it with a pin. What I do with the cuff then for the bottom is I fold it in half, find the midpoint and line that up with the pin that I've just placed in the jacket. I pin it to the middle first because then I know that when I'm pinning to both sides that it is going to be evenly distributed. Next of all, I pin the two edges, so it's the front of the jacket where the closure is going to be. So here you can actually see me sewing the cuffs onto the jacket. So Next what I'm doing is measuring the length of the collar because I'm going to add a separate collar onto the jacket just because I don't like the look of it. I got my regular fabric and I got my interfacing fabric. The interfacing would then just provide a bit more stability for the collar so it's not so floppy. And using the measurements that I just took, I'm just going to measure that directly onto the fabric instead of making a pattern for it. Then you make up your mind how thick do you want the collar to be. I think I went with a 3, a three inch length. So first of all you lay down your regular fabric making sure that you have the right sides facing out so you're sewing the interfacing to the inside of the fabric. With the interfacing on one side of it it nearly looks like there's crystals on it and that's the side you want to place down against the fabric or else it's just going to stick to the iron. After that what I'm doing is just folding the fabric in half with the right side facing each other so the interfacing is going to be on the outside and I'm just sewing up both of the edges. So both ends of it I'm just going to sew a straight stitch right across making sure everything's lined up as per usual. I'm just going to go back to the iron and flip it inside out so the, fabric, the right fabric's on the outside and just press it then so it is nice and flat. On the back panel find your midpoint. Mine was probably about 4.75 inches, so I'm just lining up the middle crease that I created on the collar with the midpoint of the back of the jacket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it on with an overlocking stitch since I already have all the seams of the jacket sewn up and flipped inside out. So to do an overlock a stitch, I go on to the I function on my machine and I set the machine to the super stretch setting. It just makes sure that the stitch goes on right, that it is more secure and it usually works out best for me. So you go from A all the way to I, you see me trying to turn the thing backwards here, no idea why I was probably looking at doing it through the camera. So turn it to I and have it on the super stretch setting. On the super stretch you can choose the width of your stitch. You can have, if you see the plus, if you put it towards the plus, it makes it bigger. Put it towards the minus, it makes it smaller. So now I have the collar on, I have all the pins in. I'm gonna put it to the machine and I'm gonna try sew as close to the edge as I can. So since it is an overlocking stitch, if you stitch with this, it'll go over the edge of the fabric and lock it together while doing something like a zigzag stitch then over the edge. So 
So you see, this is the jacket so far. I'm just lining up the zip with the jacket, hoping that it does still line up, and it does, because we made the pattern off the zip that we had. So we're working around the materials that we had. For a zip, what I usually do is I line it up, put the zip down, but I put the zip on backwards, because I want to kind of do a half hidden zipper effect, and it just makes it look cleaner as well. So I put what should be where it zips up facing out and then I just pin it the whole way up and just doing the exact same with the other side. So So what I'm doing here is just starting from the collar, I'm just sewing a straight stitch down. What I like to do is put the presser foot on the actual zip, just it makes the stitch go straighter for me anyway. And then I'm just sewing a straight stitch down the whole length of the zip. So now what you're going to see me do is I'm folding the zip in, so the zip is facing the direction that it should now. And I'm just pulling along the fabric just to make sure that it's lying nice and flat and making sure that you're keeping the fabric taut as you're sewing the whole way down. And once that's folded, it's under the presser foot, I'm just going to use the hand wheel to put the first stitch in and then I'm just going to do a back stitch again. And then I'm going to sew down the whole length of the jacket. So all the way down, as I said, paying extra caution when you're actually getting close to the elastic. And when the, where the elastic meets the fabric is a bit thicker, so it is very likely that the stitch will go off course. So just be careful when you're sewing that part on. And on the other side of the zip, where you have the part that you pull, I'm going to show you that in a second, how I get around that without getting the stitch wonky or lopsided or going off course. And once I get to that part of the zip, what I usually do is I put the needle down into the fabric, I'll then lift my presser foot and I'll lift it as high as it can go and I'll zip the zip all the way back down to the stopper at the end. And then when you're sewing the rest of the zip, it's pretty much like how I showed you with the other side. You sew the whole way up, fold it in, and once it's folded in, then you sew it back down again by doing a top stitch. When I'm doing the straight stitches and attaching things, I usually like to do a stitch length two and a half, but when I'm doing top stitching, I will do a stitch length of four. So now we're after moving on to the pants, I'm going to get my pocket patterns that I've made a while ago, attaching the right sides together. I'm just going to pin the pocket to the edge of the pants, leaving about a one inch space from the very top waistband. Now what I'm doing is I'm just preparing my back and side pockets. So I'm just snipping all these notches just because when I want to press in the edges it does make it easier to fold them all in instead of trying to do the whole thing at once. It just That just make, kind of makes it look messy. So I snip in the amount of seam allowance which is a quarter inch and then I'm going to get the iron and I'm going to press them flat. At a quarter inch allowance is I'm just sewing down the edges of the pocket that I just, um, that I just pressed with the iron. So what I'm doing now is I'm just getting the front and back panels of my pants. So first of all, I'm going to start by getting the two front panels and I'm just going to line them up with each other from waistband to crotch and I'm going to sew it a quarter inch seam allowance all the way from the top of that line all the way down to the crotch. So from the waistband to the crotch, I'm sewing at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once I get to the crotch part, I'm then just flipping it around and I'm putting my machine back onto my overlocking stitch, which I showed you a while ago, turning it onto the eye setting for my machine and then setting it to a super stretch stitch. So I've just gotten the two back panels that I've just sewn together and I'm just lining them up where I want to. Usually I'd have darts in the pants which would show me where to put them, but I'm just making sure that they are in line with each other at about five inches down from the top of the waistband, but pointing straight with the pattern so it looks it looks a little bit slanted when you are putting them on and just putting pins in the middle of the pocket then so they're not getting in my way when I am sewing the pocket onto the pants. So 
So here you see me just sewing the pocket onto the pants. I'm going to try to keep this stitch as close to the edge as I possibly can using a straight stitch again and having it on a stitch length 4. So when I'm doing my top stitching, as I said, I use a stitch length 4. So long as close as I possibly can to the edge of it, but keeping both the line that I've sewn onto the pockets already and the line that I'm sewing now completely perpendicular to each other, just to give it a cleaner look and a cleaner finish. Now I'm just laying the back panel of the pants down on the floor and I'm laying the top panel then over it, right sides facing each other. And I'm just going to pin the outer seams because I do want to put cargo pockets on the pants as well. So at least if I sew the outer seams together, I can get the cargo pockets on if I don't sew up the inside seam. And so you sew down the waistband and as you can see here, I'm sewing around the perimeter of the pocket at a quarter inch seam allowance again. Everything I sew, I do at a quarter inch seam allowance. It just looks the best to me. It has the best overall finish. Um, I used to do it with an inch seam allowance before, but then I had way too much excess fabric on the inside of whatever I was making. Um, it is always good to cut more if you're unsure of what you're doing, because at least then if you make it too small, you can take the stitching out and sew it lesser seam allowance. But I kind of know what works for me, so kind of play around with what works for you and see what works for you best anyway. So once I get down to the end of the pocket, and I'm actually meeting back at the pants again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the needle in the machine, I'm going to pivot the fabric to go up the length of the pocket. So I'm closing off half of the pocket now so things aren't going to fall out. It has a cleaner finish. So what I'm doing is the line that I've sewn previous to attach the pockets to the pants, I'm just going to trace that halfway up that line. So just sewing following the same stitch that I have already previously done, sewing up to where my second thumb is, putting the needle back in the machine, lifting the presser foot, pivoting it back around, and then tracing back down that line again. It also adds stability to the pockets, it makes sure the pockets that you've sewn on aren't gonna break off, and it's just what I found easiest for me. Following that line down then, you're just gonna follow down the whole length of the leg, and once you get to the end of the leg, you're going to put your machine back onto its overlocker setting and you're going to sew up the edge of the seam that you've just created with the overlocker stitch. And it, as I said before, it just stops your fabric from fraying. It gives you a cleaner look from the inside. So after we've the side seams sewn up and we have our seams overlocked, what we're going to do is we're going to find a position for our external pockets. So the external pockets I'm doing, I'm doing cargo pockets, which I'm putting down by the knee. In my pattern, I already have my knee line marked. So I just go back to my pattern, look at where the knee line is, and that's where I'm gonna put the cargo pocket on the outside seam of the pants. So I have the pocket lined up here now, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm putting a flap over the top of the pocket. Just kind of, more, just for decorative purposes really, I like the aesthetic of it, I like how it looks. Um, and I just like to try different things all the time. As you can see here, I've made the flap at a point. I'd usually do them squared, but I wanted to change up what I was doing this time. So, have the pocket pinned on, and now I'm just pinning the flap on over top, leaving about a half inch allowance from the pocket flap to the top of the actual pocket itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew on the flap of the pocket first. So where I've top stitched around the flap of the pocket, I'm going to just trace that line again with my cur current stitch, doing a straight stitch over it again, keeping it nice and taut the whole time, pulling the fabric, making sure that it's not bunching up and it's going exactly where you want it to, and just finishing that off again with a back stitch. Once I have that finished off then, without even tri trimming the treads, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move directly onto the pocket. And it's pretty much the exact same procedure as the back pockets that we put on a while ago. I have my lines already sewn into the pocket to sew the seam allowance down. And I'm just going to try sew as close to the edge of the fabric as I can, keeping the lines perpendicular as much as I can. So 
So what I'm doing here now is I'm just sewing up the inseam of the pants. This so is the inside part of the legs. Again, going back onto a straight stitch at a 2.5 length and just sewing all the way up, making sure that the crotch seams line up perfectly with each other. So now I'm just putting the waistband onto the pants. I actually made this waistband myself, so if you want a tutorial on how I do the drawstring waistbands, just let me know and I can make a separate video on it because it is something that I need to go a little bit more in depth about. And just lining up the back seam of the, well the only seam in the waistband where I sewed it shut with the back seam of the pants. Then I'm pulling it to stretch it and making sure that the front lines up with the front seam of the pants which is between the two drawstrings. Pulling it to stretch, making sure the side seams are lined up. So now I'm just putting the cuffs into the pants. So the pants are inside out at the moment and you put the cuffs in so it's right sides of the cuff facing right side of the fabric stretching it just to make sure everything's lining up with itself and then pinning it in place it just makes it easier for you if you put four pins in you can hold the pins as you're sewing to make sure that you're stretching out the cuff to meet the length of the fabric as well it makes things a little bit easier I'm using a combination of a zigzag stitch and an overlocker stitch just to make sure that everything is clean and secure and when I am sewing elasticated materials or stretch materials together I'm more likely to use a zigzag stitch as the zigzag stitch allows for your fabric to still stretch. When I get to the pockets I make sure that the pockets are facing the front and I'm sewing the seam of the pocket down so the pockets face the front of the pants. After that then I'm just going to the cuffs of the pants super happy with the results I'm really happy with every how everything turned out and um, if I was to change anything it is just a little bit tight on this part of the sleeve because I went exactly off my own measurements but what you can do is if you want to have a baggier fit you can just add on like an inch or two to either side of your pattern just to make it a little bit baggier a little bit looser so it's not like skin tight or like clung to you because if you're not using an elasticated fabric or if it's like stiff then it is going to be a little bit less comfortable. Now this, the pants are perfect. The pants are a perfect size. They're a perfect fit. Uh, they're kind of baggy. They're not tailored, which I, that's why I put the elasticated waistband on it because you can actually just kind of cinch it into your own size then. But besides the sleeves, I'm so happy with everything. I'd love to see other people recreate it in their own way. I'd like to be able to see what twists you could put on it yourself, see what changes you'd make. And if you do recreate it yourself or you do make it, I'd really appreciate it if you were to tag me on Instagram so I can see the amazing work that you're going to create. So you can tag me on Instagram at Robin underscore hearts underscore will be linked right here. Um, and it'll also be linked down in the description box down below. Also, if you have any suggestions or you want to see me make anything or do anything in a video, I'd really appreciate if you could leave suggestions down in the, in the comment box down below or just give me a message on Instagram and I'll see what I can do. Over lockdown now, I'm going to try to produce a lot of content. I was going to try to do one video a week, but while I have the time, I might as well try to put out as much as I can. So any suggestions are really helpful. So don't forget to like, subscribe and click that notification bell down below and you'll get notifications then every time that I upload a new video. I'd really appreciate as well if you could share my channel with your friends or if you know anyone who's interested in fashion design, making clothes, DIY, doing makeup or hair artistry and I will be doing more on the entertainment side of things as well by doing like drag performances so if you know anybody who's interested I'd really appreciate if you could pop me over to them and get them onto my channel so they could see what content I'm going to bring out soon. So thanks very much for watching my video guys and I'll catch you in the next one.